Two gals that uh, we as an agency and social workers and other people thought perhaps foster care was the ultimate place for these young ladies. To moms and the family's uh, credit, uh, she raised them by herself and did a fabulous job. They're sparkling, they are enthusiastic. Quite exciting. They're uh, everything young ladies should be. Marie Cadillac and Sonia Cadillac. <laughs> Everyone who meets the girls are just so impressed by their, their uh, outgoing personalities and their love of life. Girls, you did a wonderful job. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. wonderful. I hope you had a good time doing it, we huh? Did. So you'll make a career? My name is Deb. <laughs> it's not just the audience members who find them memorable. We all find them quite easy to work with and quite memorable. They're so kind and everyone that meets them is very impressed by uh, how unassuming and, and just uh, incredibly vibrant they are. Fun to be around. Let's get over there! Now how did it do that? I don't know if I've ever seen any happier girls than them. I'm sorry. It's okay. The one word that keeps coming up when I talk to other cast members is they can't believe just how gracious they are. You did really well. If they make mistakes, they're gracious. If they have to be late, they're gracious. I don't think much about their disability anymore. I think about their smile. I think of how I feel when I'm around them, how they make me feel as I watch them interact with others. I see that warmth exude through them. They love life, they love their friends. They're just genuinely nice people. Small quote from Albert Einstein, there are two ways to live life, and one is as if nothing is a miracle. The other way is as if everything is. And I think that's the example that I see in them. It's like you take nothing for granted. They're great to work with because uh, uh, that grace and that generosity of spirit is something that uh, you can't teach anyone. And uh, if they come with that, then it makes it so much better for the other actors and everyone relaxes. To me, that's a big compliment when the other actors refer to them as gracious and talented and skillful. That means that they come, they do their jobs, and they're nice about it. And for community filmmaking, that's the, that's the bottom line. The Mount Calvary Lutheran <laughs> Church is doubling as a movie set. Films we do um, are not like films that you would make in your your basement, you know, <laughs> they're they're like real, real films. It's the reason you? director Scott Thompson is shooting on location in the city of Trempolo. All right. Titled The Last Bridge Home, the, the movie is Thompson's okay. sixth independently problem. produced film. It tells the story of a troubled teenage girl. All of a sudden, she uh, finds herself getting letters addressed to her, but they're from soldiers who went to war and never came home. Uh, these soldiers who have died suddenly start writing to her as the conduit to get letters to their loved ones left behind. You can't get back. Marie and Sonia like Canalac are practicing like their so lines today. The Eau Claire twins are among the cast of 25 area oh, actors. The 18-year-olds have cerebral palsy. In the film, they play the nieces of a Vietnam soldier listed as missing in action. I like it because it allows me to get out of my comfort zone because, as you can tell, I'm a very shy person. Uh, we don't really refer to them as uh, being anything other than, than high school kids in the story. Them having cerebral palsy has nothing to do with this story. Uh, they're just good actors. Neither Sonia Marie or the other actors involved are earning paychecks. Still, their work is a benefit to many. Community TV is, is a way of providing 
um, television, the, the ability to create television to people who otherwise wouldn't have the uh, ability to do that, uh, wouldn't have the means or the access to do that. Uh, I think community filmmaking is the same thing. While Thompson will finish filming next week, the movie the isn't the set dream. to hit Eau Claire and La Crosse theaters until the fall. In Trempolo, Jessica Lasheski, New Center 13. They certainly have taken their talents to the uh, highest degree, and uh, we know that they'll be nothing but successful in every endeavor that they try. All the stars must have aligned just perfectly, and I haven't, hadn't been able to open uh, our uh, office email for quite some time, in fact, about five weeks. When I finally got in to our email, it was a small blurb, as they always are, and it, the teaser caught my eye. I opened it, and as I uh, read further and further, the names of Sonia and Marie immediately came to mind. Hello. We actually uh, got a call from Warren one Wednesday. Yeah, we have seen your pictures. And so he's like, they'll never believe what I just heard. I have to come over and tell you because I want to tell you both and person just to see your reactions. When I got home from therapy, Sonia was like, Warren called and he said he's got some big news that would be the opportunity of a lifetime. And I, at first I was like, oh, you know, it's probably something like that he thinks is really huge. But when I hear it, I'll be like, oh, that's really cool and everything. But probably not as huge as I would have imagined. So quickly I ran over to their house, told them both at the same time, and the girls were very excited, of course. So when he comes and he starts going on and on and on, I'm like, oh, Warren, just hurry up and spill it, because I can't take suspense for very long periods. A casting call for an upcoming movie, and they're spreading the word to the disability community. He all of a sudden mentioned Hollywood, and I was like, Oh my gosh, that was the one option that I pushed completely out of my head. So I was, like for a second I think I kind of went off into my own little world and kind of went into a dream kind of like feeling because I was like, Hollywood, that is just so unreal. That something, would, like that that's huge, especially to someone in Eau Claire. I tried to temper their enthusiasm, of course, and it's, it's hard because it's infectious. They're just such beautiful, wonderful girls and so optimistic and, and so buoyant. So, of course, that night, I, of course, had to call everybody I knew. And Mom was in Dallas, Texas at the time, and I was Pick up the phone! I have to call my mom. Hi, Mom! Did I wake you up? Now all my friends are planning on making fan sites and getting autographs, and it's just funny. It's hilarious. The girls got together their resumes, we did some photo shoots, they had their high school pictures. All of the material along with uh, five letters of recommendation were sent off to uh, the casting company. That night we um, actually did our resumes right away and then I went to bed and for like a week after that I could not sleep very well. Like I kept waking up like every couple hours and I kept having dreams that we were in Hollywood and doing additions and, and then I'd wake up and lay in bed for 45 minutes at a time and just kind of lay and think, whoa, you know, it really kind of changes your life even though nothing's happened yet. Last week she responded. They received the materials on Sonia and Marie and they were very impressed. And even though the script calls for younger girls, she said it's hard to know what the final revised script will call for. So that's where we stood as of Thursday, July 24th. But um, I've prayed a lot about it, and I just, you know, talk, keep telling God that if it's something He wants for us to make it happen, and if not, He'll show us what He wants for us. So, you know, I'm just keeping optimistic, but yet, you know, realistic at the same time. So we're just enjoying the ride, and to get that far in the process of casting someone, to talk to the actual casting director was a, a real thrill on their behalf. So we're hoping, and uh, if we, we feel if they don't choose them, it's their loss. Uh, they're actually awaiting news on whether they're going to be in a film this spring with Meryl Streep and Chris Cooper called Conquistadora, and uh, we're keeping our fingers and toes crossed for them. Uh, but. 
we always said that uh, if they don't get that part, we'd be sad, but we're not going to pout too much because that means they can be in more movies for us. <laughs> uh, Sonia and Marie Cadillac. Hello and welcome to Coffee Chat again and I am Ann Nelson, your host. And my first guests today are, I have a couple of young ladies. I have Amber Vance from Trempolo and Marie Cadlick from Eau Claire. And they are members of a cast of a film that's coming up, uh, it's going to be premiering soon. It's called The Last Bridge Home. And you've probably seen some of the other films. These are written by Scott Thompson here in the studio and directed by him too. But anyway, without further ado, I'd like to welcome the girls. Hi Amber and Marie, nice to see you. Thanks, nice to see you too. Glad you could come and this is kind of exciting. I hear you're having a premiere a couple of weeks from now of uh, your film, The Last Bridge Home. Now I know you were telling me some exciting news just uh, before we came on the air that uh, Hollywood was mentioned. They're make, creating a movie called Conquistadora and it's about an immigrant family. Um, the mother wants to get her two daughters with CP integrated into mainstream schools. Oh. And they needed two twin girls with CP to fill the roles of Alba and Anastasia in the film. Yeah. And my sister and I are identical twins and we have CP, so. Cerebral palsy is a chronic condition in which faulty development or damage to motor areas in the brain impair the brain's ability to adequately control body movement and muscle coordination. It's caused by damage to one or more areas of the brain, usually during fetal development, before, during, or shortly after birth, or possibly during infancy. Cerebral palsy is not progressive, it is not communicable, and it is not a disease. You're on and the waiting list? we sent in our stuff, and they were very impressed. And we're just kind of waiting. And who would you be acting with? Do you know who the... Meryl Streep Ooh. is narrating it. And Chris Cooper, he just won an Academy Award for... What's the movie he was in? What was his name? They, we, we don't... We've never been in a situation like this. So, you know, when it's been like two weeks almost and we've heard nothing since the first couple of days after they got our stuff, like, is that good, or should we just assume we didn't get the part, or what should we assume, because we just don't know. And I said, no, ladies, anything can happen here, you know, any number of things, from thank you very much, uh, you know, a nice form letter returned to us, to no response, to perhaps using one of you, to perhaps using both of you, to perhaps using you as extras. We don't really know. You know how Hollywood is. So, you know, it is kind of stressful, and I just... You know, like I said, I'm not one that can take a lot of suspense. For me, it's overwhelming, and I get these days where I just get antsy. It's like, oh, come on, can't you just tell us something so I don't die here? You know, so this is definitely killing me. I can't stand not knowing anything. Patience is a virtue, I guess. <laughs> I'm reading a story about the twins that the movie Conquistadora is based upon. I didn't really realize how much they went through just to be integrated into regular schools. Me and Sonia never really had to fight to be integrated into mainstream. Um, we did go to like early ed and stuff. We were different. We had chairs and things. and. We couldn't run around and play like the other kids could. So, you know, and we were really well accepted. Kids loved us, but kids liked diversity. And, but when we got older, it got harder because when you're older, it's weird to be different. So, not so much in high school and college, but more in middle school. So. You know, I'd come home and I'd cry to my mom and I'd be like, Mom, I don't like being weird. I wish I was tall and pretty like the most popular girl, but no, I have to be this weird kid in a wheelchair. You know, I had about two good friends in middle school. I should say three because Sonia stuck by me too, like she always has. 
but you know I thought it was all about me and my disability and that's why people didn't like me. I don't want people to know me as, oh she was a nice girl in the wheelchair. I want people to know me as, she was a really nice girl and she was fun to be around and quit laughing at me Grace. You know, she was always happy and added a lot to life and you know, when I became 16, you know, I decided I I'm not gonna look at my chair anymore. I'm just gonna look at myself and focus on what are my good attributes and push away, you know, the things I think are bad about me because once you start looking at all your flaws, you get yourself in trouble. You should just learn to like yourself and be happy with who you are. The one person you should have loved right from the start. Damn right. My son loves that line. <laughs> Did you really say that? <laughs> now people can definitely see that and it draws people to you, especially when you have confidence. You know, I think I'm gonna be quiet though and let Sonia get in here. Holy cow! <laughs> she, uh, so long with it. Anyway, yeah, they'd always tell me, like, they put limits on to what I could do and couldn't do. And it just get really frustrating for me and I'd start believing them. And why are people doing this? Because they know that I can do more. But then again, I'd always have that in the back of my mind, those little thoughts that I wouldn't be able to, and thankfully, I had a couple of good friends in my family who would always be by my side and just encourage me and support me and tell me that I can't do anything that I put my mind to. My disability does not limit me. And it doesn't make me who I am, because who I am is on, on the inside, and yeah. <laughs> You're such a sweet. I love you, Sonia May I, Cat. I love you, Marie Nicole. <laughs> I love Sonia to death. We've been through a lot together and we're great friends. And, you know, I think as we grow older, we'll become even closer because I think distance will bring us closer together. So, oh, I love you, Sonia. Oh. We're all looking forward to seeing the last bridge home, I know. And maybe one second, I'll just give the dates. Um, August 23rd and 24th at the Rivoli Theatre in La Crosse, 5 p.m. Uh, the Opera House in Independence at 7.30, that's on September 4th. And then September 13th and the 14th at uh, the State Theatre. of the poppers. It looks so good. You look very nice too. Oh my gosh, I just love your dress. And your makeup and your hair is looking good already. I want to put it on. Literally, I am all. It's literally glittery. <laughs> I mean, glittery. We are all glitter queens and 
Cody's the glitter prince. <laughs> The screen you're gonna be on. How's that make you feel? Quite exciting. I'm hoping I don't look really fat. Welcome to the uh, world premiere of The Last Bridge Home. You're not only gonna get to see the film for the first time yourselves, but uh, all the cast members who are here, they're kind of scattered amongst you. Uh, they'll be seeing it for the first time also. And uh, might be just a wee bit nervous about it, but uh, I can tell you they all did an excellent job. No, between. Why don't we just get a letter like everyone else? Girls, get in the van. We're going to find your father. You two in the van. No, this is it for me. You are going to get in the van and go with us right now. Do you understand? Marie Cadillac and Sonia Cadillac. For those narrow-minded, short-sighted people out there that would see Marie and Sonia in a film and, uh, and exclude them immediately because they have cerebral palsy, I would think, you know, what are you looking at? Because anyone who watches them on screen knows that you can't take your eyes off them when they're on screen and that that's not something that that anybody just has and there's nothing in particular that they're doing necessarily it's just their kind of person they are so we get lots of close-ups and uh, <laughs> like really tight shots <laughs> Um, but that's so that people can kind of involve themselves totally in that feeling that they're already feeling that, that wow, you know, there's something special about these two. Which is, I'm sure, why one of the reasons why they're taking so long to decide whether the girls should be in that movie in Hollywood is that they have that. And even though they're older than the part they wanted them for, I'm sure they're still in the running because of that. You know, you don't just find that, any, you can't teach an actor to have that magnetism on screen. They have it or they don't. Yeah, this is I this is kind of a new idea, but I'm trying to do different kinds of films. You would play uh, a uh, young person who uh, is at home alone <laughs> and uh, no. taking care of your sister who is kind of mean to you. And you're the caretaker, sort of. You have to keep an eye on her. I mean to you. And right. so you're kind of like, you're kind of like doing this until kind of weird things begin to happen. So like <laughs> she's taking care of me. How? Like in my. Yeah, kind of emotionally and kind of. Okay. You're almost like Maggie and Firefly, only worse. Oh, <laughs> dude. It's it's not that big a deal, right? I mean. People are going to understand that this was just a mistake or something, right? Are you stupid? You do realize that that wasn't filmed in this container, right? I mean, I know your mom's got you chained to her right leg and everything, but you do know something about the rest of the world, don't you? You have a real attitude. Yeah, um, I can do that. And it's a winter night. You're not getting along with her at all. Then sounds like someone's trying to get in. And 
how do you to deal with that? And does she maybe have something to do with that? You don't know if you can trust her or not. <laughs> how about that? Cool, I'm excited. I am too. <laughs> and you get the lead. She's I the, know. the leading lady. They have to look kind of tense and scared. Okay. But the lead character also has has brains, so so <laughs> that she can, you might have to work on. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh, it's getting cold out there. All of a sudden. <laughs> well, Bill, let's call it a night. <laughs> um, you know so. I love you. <laughs> you know, me and Sonia have our moments where we don't always get along the greatest, but sometimes I just have a tendency to kind of be motherly toward her and like not, not like, not always nurturing, but more like nagging. You know, and sometimes I feel that way. way and I know I don't always treat Maria the best either. And I feel bad about that. Like one Easter, actually. I got really mad because she had a Kermit the Frog puzzle and I didn't. And I wanted the Kermit the Frog. And she wouldn't share it with me. So I ended up giving her two black eyes on Easter. And I'm the one that mostly instigates the arguments. When I was little, I was 10, and me and Sonia, we were playing Barbies, because you know it's a little girl thing, and she was doing something that really irritated me, so we got in like this big fight, and the home health aide that was in helping us do our cares, she split us up for the entire day, like Sonia was out in the living room and I was in the bedroom and I couldn't come out and see her. and. Holy cow, that was like the worst punishment I've ever had in my entire life. I was having a really bad week, and Sonia was just there, and you know, she she could totally tell when I wasn't having a good week, because she even started crying more than I was crying, and then she gave me a big hug. I don't know, there's, I'm too much of a softie myself, and I can't take it. When I see my friends or family in pain, and finally I'm like, you know what? I think I need to go comfort Marie. And I had just gotten this chocolate almond candy bar that day. And it was the sweetest thing she gave me. Her chocolate bar with almonds in it. Just to make me feel better, she's like, Here's some chocolate because you need it right now and, you know, chocolate does help a lot. But I think just having a sister's love and friendship and understanding helps even more. So, she's an awesome sister and I just want her to know that because I don't think I tell her that as often as I should. So, I want to be an angel for Halloween. You're my angel. Thank you, sis. Sorry, but you guys are good. But unfortunately, we're looking for somebody early adolescence, and you guys are way too old. And I, honestly, I don't know if I was really all that bummed or not be well I was bummed but at the same time I was kind of relieved because there's a lot of changes going on in my life and then we got starting to think about it and Marie brought up a good point she's like they better not pick somebody who's Never had a disability in their entire life to play the part because then if they do, me and her won't be that happy, obviously. Because they have no clue what the heck it's like.
I would just think even if if even if they didn't get this part, that casting director is going to have them in mind for something else down the road. You know, one or both of them. You know, can't imagine that they wouldn't because it's something that's pretty evident to us. I wanted to get into education, but I also, through my high school career, was involved in marketing a lot, and I, I grew to like that a lot. Sounds like a good book that you can sit down with your family or whatever and just read. So I'm thinking, maybe since I like working with kids or teenagers and marketing, maybe combining the two and doing marketing ed. But then I've spent a lot of time with Elijah and I'm like, oh gosh, he's so cute and I'd love to teach kids. So, you know, I just don't know anymore. Education or working with people in some way is what I want to do for sure. I'm planning on moving out and on my own and that's a weird thought. Leaving my family. Breathe. <laughs> I'm trying. We've been through a lot together, but you know, I'll come visit them a lot. I couldn't imagine life without my mom or my sister, or little Elijah, my brother, you know. It, it's just so cool and they bring a lot to my life. <laughs> but you know, life without them would be boring. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> I was hit her head on the wall. Oh, gee. I did. Well, I'll explain a few things. So I have to come see them once in a while. 